Hey, I'm Al Stein, and today I'm going to show you five secret Logic Pro tips that everyone should know. Logic has so many great features, and a lot of them are kind of hidden, and you have to know that they're there to use them. So let me show you five that I use all the time, and it's a great tool for sound design, mixing, and increasing your workflow. Let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to show you is something called Enable Patch Merging. So here in the library, you have all your patches, all your synths, all your sounds. One of the stock Logic sounds I use all the time is this African Percussion Kit. By default, it adds plugins and buses to the track. Most of the time, I don't want those plugins, and I don't want to start with the default. I want to add my own chain, I want to add my own buses, and instead of going in and deleting all of them, there's an easier way to do this. First, we're going to open up an empty MIDI track, and let's go find that African Kit World Percussion. And before we click on it, we can come down here to the bottom left, this little circle with three dots. You can click on that and click Enable Patch Merging. So now you actually have an option if you want to include the audio effects, if you want to include the sends. If there's any MIDI effects by default, you can include that too. But we just want the instrument, so we're going to turn off all of those other options. So with this window open and those options turned off, now we can click the instrument we want. So African Kit here is the one we want. We can click on that. Now it's brought in the instrument with nothing on the track. No plugins and no default sends. Some of my favorite features in Logic are under these MIDI effects here, like the arpeggiator, chord trigger, this modulator. There's a lot of great options here, but these are MIDI effects and they can only be applied to MIDI. There's a way we can actually apply that to audio. We have this drum loop that I just grabbed from the Apple loops. I want to be able to apply those MIDI effects to this audio track. What we can do is open up a MIDI track here with Quick Sampler. And in Quick Sampler, we can click this recorder button. So this button is great, so you can actually record whatever sample you want right into it. But we can actually route an audio track into this Quick Sampler. So under Input, we can click None to open the drop-down menu, Audio, and here's our two-step beat that we dragged in from the Apple Loops. So if we click Monitor, we'll actually be able to hear that. So we have that audio track muted, but we can actually hear it because it's feeding it into Quick Sampler here. Let's go ahead and put a plug-in on this Quick Sampler track choose anything we want, let's say a phaser. We can use the MIDI effects to manipulate that audio track as if it's a MIDI track because it's being fed into Quick Sampler. So let's go to MIDI effects, we'll open up modulator, and with this MIDI effects modulator plugin, let's click learn plugin parameter, and we'll assign that to the mix of this phaser plugin that we put on it. Let's lower the rate here to have four bars. And when we play it, we'll hear that phaser plugin being manipulated by the MIDI effects modulator that we've added. Now that we're able to apply MIDI effects to that audio region, there's no actual MIDI region here to be able to see on our timeline. This leads into the next tip of how to bounce in real time to an audio track. Normally to bounce MIDI to audio, you would just right click on the region and click bounce regions in place. But because there's actual no MIDI information and it's just being fed into this quick sampler in record mode, you can't bounce the region like you normally would. So in this case, we'll create a new audio track. And on our quick sampler track, we'll set the output to be any bus here. We'll choose bus one. On our audio track that we've created, we'll choose the input to be that bus. We'll open up quick sampler, go back to recorder and monitor. And on the audio track we created, we'll hit record arm. Now when we press record, it will essentially bounce that audio to the region that we've selected and apply all of those MIDI effects and changes that we've done within the phaser and the modulator MIDI effects. We can go ahead and mute this quick sampler track. And essentially what we're left with is just the bounce information from that quick sampler track and it's printed it to the timeline. You can also use this technique if you want to be able to print a send. For example, you have reverb on a separate bus, and you want to have that reverb show up as an audio file. You can use that technique to route that bus to another audio track, set the input to be that bus from the audio track, and record the reverb from that bus so it shows up as an audio region in the timeline. Another great way I like to use this is when I have a plugin on a track, and I want to be able to manipulate the plugin parameters in real time. Let me show you what I mean. On this drum track, I'm going to go ahead and put this Galaxy Tape Echo. In the control surfaces settings, I'm going to map a couple of parameters to my keyboard so that we can play around with those parameters in real time. Okay, so we have a controller assignment window open. We can click learn mode here and we'll click any parameter. We'll click feedback and then I'll go over to my keyboard and I'll turn one of the knobs. So now we can see that when I turn the knob, the feedback is moving. We'll also do the same for echo rate. 
So now we have learn mode already enabled. We can click echo right here and then I'll turn another knob on my keyboard. Now it's assigned that to the knob on the keyboard that I've turned. We'll turn learn mode off and on the keyboard when I turn one knob, the feedback moves and the other, the rate moves. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. We'll open up a new audio track. So on the drum beat, we'll go to the output and we'll choose bus one. The track we created to apply the effects in real time, we'll go there and the input will choose bus one as well. We're going to record and enable the audio track that we created that we want to put the effects on. And we'll hit record and we'll start messing around with those parameters. So we loop that recording and now we have multiple takes of us playing around with the keyboard and playing around with those effects. So this is a great way to, you can go and you can say, I like this part from take five. I like this part from take four. I like this part from take two. This is a great sound design tool. So you can actually have it feel like you're there playing live, playing around with the synth parameters. Automation is amazing and we use it in every session, but sometimes I want to have that feel that I'm actually there playing live, playing around with the synth parameters. And this is a great way to do that. Speaking of automation, this actually leads me into my next tip. When there's automation applied to an audio or MIDI region, when we move that region, the automation will move with it. But what if we have automation that's applied to a bus? If we move these audio regions, the automation that's applied to the region will move, but it won't move with the bus. This is really annoying when you're working on a track. And for example, you want to add an extra section. If you move those audio regions, any automation that's done on a bus won't move with it. Here's a good way you can move the automation on a bus to move with the audio regions. In the bus track, we can right click and click create MIDI region here. Let's resize this empty MIDI region to fit the whole section. Now when we move these regions, the automation on the bus will move with it. The last thing I want to talk about is kind of a hidden feature within the Logic stock EQ. So by default, the channel EQ will just be processing the stereo field. But let's say you're mixing and you want to do some mid-side EQ. There's a way you can do this. Under channel EQ, instead of stereo, you can click dual mono. By default, you have left and right options to process just the left or the right individually. If we click on the circle with the three dots, instead of stereo, we can click mid-side. So now we can make changes either just to the middle or to the sides individually. This is a great mixing technique to make the bass mono so those sub-frequencies don't muddy up the stereo field. If you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything today, click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments if there's any other hidden logic pro tips that you use all the time. Thanks for watching.